Today, we're going to be making an automatic fish feeder. So I'm a junior computer engineering student at the University of Rhode Island, and at the apartment that I'm living in, I can't get a cat or a dog, but my girlfriend and I wanted to get something, so we got a fish. And fish are much easier to take care of than a cat or a dog, but you still have to feed them, and if you're not around to feed them, like when you go home for breaks, then how do you feed them? It's kind of uncomfortable asking someone to come to your house and just to, you know, feed a fish. It doesn't seem like that big of a task. So, in order to rectify that problem, I decided to make an automatic fish feeder. And I'm doing it for a class at my school so that other people can also follow along and try to make one for themselves. All right, so if we plug in the fish feeder, the screen is gonna come on. And if we click the rotary encoder down twice in a second, we're gonna enter the menu. In the menu, you can twist the rotary, enco rotary encoder to select the amount of times you wanna feed your fish throughout the day. So this fish feeder currently has the capability of feeding a fish twice a day, four times a day, six times a day, or eight times a day. You can also test the output. So on T, if you click down the rotary encoder, it's gonna go through one feeding cycle, just so that you can see if enough food's coming out of your dispenser. Why don't we go ahead and test that out? So just like that. So we just fed our fish perfectly three flakes. Which is exactly what I want. So I like to feed my fish twice a day. He's a beta fish, so he only needs to eat twice a day. So I'm gonna go to two and select it. Now it's gonna blink twice. So from this time forward, it's gonna feed once every 12 hours. And it's just gonna do that pretty much indefinitely. After 15 seconds, the screen also dims and turns off so that it doesn't keep any rooms bright at night. And there it goes. Now let's look at the parts that we're gonna to use to build this automatic fish feeder. I chose the Arduino Nano Every to be the microcontroller for this project. It packs 18 digital I.O. pins in a small form factor. Designed for everyday use, the Nano Every is a perfect choice for this project. The stepper motor driver we will be using is the Palulu 8825. It is designed to run high current applications so it will provide more than enough power for our project. It takes in clock pulses from the Arduino and applies current to the stepper motor's two coils accordingly to control each step. The stepper motor we will be using is from Palulu as well. It is a bipolar stepper motor with a max operating current of 670 milliamps, and it should be strong enough for this project. To display the feed times, we will be using a seven segment display. A single seven segment display is limited to single digits, but we'll make it work. Accompanying it is a microchip that takes in binary numbers from the Arduino and converts them to light up the corresponding segments on the display to show what the user requested. To navigate our menu, we will be using a rotary encoder. Rotary encoders are cool because unlike a potentiometer, they can increment and decrement infinitely in any direction. The stepper motor doesn't need to be running all the time in between feeds, so a relay will be used to apply power to the stepper motor driver when the stepper motor is ready to spin. It will turn off after so the stepper motor remains off until requested again. A 100 microfarad capacitor will be used to prevent harmful voltage spikes from hitting the separate motor driver. A PN2222 NPN transistor will be used in accomplice with the relay. It will control the current into the relay to actuate the electromagnet switch within the relay, allowing current to flow through. Eight 220 ohm resistors will be used to limit the current to the seven segment display's LEDs so we don't fry them. One 1000 ohm resistor will be used between the base of the transistor and the output pin on the Arduino. A 1N4007 diode will be used in between the transistor's collector pin and the relay's ground pin. This will make sure no current travels back through the device. Let's have a look at the schematic I made using all the parts listed before. Simply connect all components together following the wires drawn in the schematic. You may need to look up the pinout diagrams for any components that, you, that don't look familiar to you, such as the seven segment display. This is the schematic that I designed and used to build my first prototype on a breadboard. Pause the video and take a screenshot if you need to zoom in on any of the wires and which connections that they run to. 
Now let's go look at my first prototype. Hey guys, so I just finished my first prototype. I built this following the schematic that I showed you guys previously. Hopefully yours looks neater than mine. <laughs> We're gonna transfer this from the spreadboard um, into a circuit that we can actually slide into a housing later, but this is just to test it. So currently the device is in sleep mode. So it is it's still counting and it is still scheduled to, t to feed at the uh, set time, but the display has just turned off and it turns off after 15 seconds of inactivity so that it doesn't keep any dark rooms bright at night. So if we click the rotary encoder down once, we can wake it back up. So currently it's set to feed two times a day. So it's gonna feed once every 12 hours. So the stepper motor is gonna to rotate to shake food out of the container once every 12 hours. If we double click the rotary encoder down in two seconds, we can enter the menu or we can select what we wanna output. At this point, the fish feeder prototype was working exactly how I wanted it to just as you saw at the beginning of this video. It was time to start thinking about how to put it into a container. So I just finished condensing the circuit that was on the breadboard into a smaller circuit that we may be able to fit into a housing. I did the best that I could and it's still really messy and I don't think that I'm gonna be able to fit it into my original idea, which was some PV PVC tube. I just don't think that I can fit all of this wiring and mess into this PVC tube. So instead I'm gonna reuse an old pill bottle as a housing, because it's much bigger and it'll be much easier to use. So I fit everything inside the pill bottle, and now we're just throwing on some paint. We're painting it blue to make it look like the ocean, and then we're going to add some fish, maybe some bubbles. So it's all finished, it's all painted, we got a nice angel fish and a jellyfish and some bubbles. So currently it's set up to feed um, two times a day, so once every 12 hours. So it should feed tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. and we'll come back and try to catch it doing its feeding procedures. But yeah, there it is. And this is removable. This is attached via some command strips and it's balanced just right enough where it shouldn't shouldn't fall in. It would take a, some, a pretty serious hit to be able to fall into the bowl. All right, so it's 11 a.m. and the feeder is about to go off. And there we go. So it's working just as expected. One thing I did forget to mention in the video was the code. The code was all written by me, but it should be easy to follow if you're familiar with the C++ programming. If the schematic is followed correctly, the feeder should work right off the bat when the code is uploaded to the Arduino board. The code will be provided in the description of this video, and it's in the zip file that was sent to you. Thank you for watching the video, and have fun if you decide to try this project on your own. Also, yes, this is the same intro clip from earlier, just played in reverse. I love cinematics.